Good evening, everybody. JC here from ECU Connection. We have uh, Audi A3. It is the 8P model. And these cars are getting on a bit now, but we have quite a few in still. And what this one's in for today is a common fault. Uh, the immobilizer's packed up, and um, they've had a key made for it, but it didn't work. Um, locksmith managed to cut the key, um, can't get it to work on the car. So what we've done temporarily is switch the immobilizer off for him so we could get it down to the workshop. And it starts and runs, but we have a few problems which we're going to iron out tonight. So we start it up, and what we have is safe in the cluster there. Also, the electric windows, if I operate that, up, down, not working. So what we're going to do, we're going to do it as a lost keys, um, AKL as you call it in the trade, see if we can make a transponder chip up for it or a key up for it or we'll program that key to it. And uh, well, let's see. First off, let's get this cluster out. So uh, we don't need it running anymore. To get the cluster out, quite an easy job. We uh, lower the, oh God, that's all broken. Oh dear, he's had this to bits. So drop the column down, pull it back. Let's get that up here. And um, there should be a piece of trim on here, which is missing. And in the corners in there, uh, let me get a torch. Okay, now we've got some light. And if I shine it down, there should be two screws there and there. We take them out and uh, the cluster just falls out after that, you'll see. Right, so we have those two screws out now. And it's just a case of pulling the cluster and getting to the multi-plug on the back, which uh, is easier with two hands. There's a little release tab there. The little pink lever's got to, uh, there we go. There's a locking tab there, which is blue. And then we push that down and we pull the pink lever back. Out comes the multi-plug. And out comes the cluster. So uh, with the cluster out, we can then tell a couple of things. Now, if we look on the back, if you've got two screws there and there, this type of cluster in the trade, we call it a Micronus. It's because that is what the processor is inside. Um, not the easiest ones to do lost keys on. Don't know why this one is being tricky to do, but we're going to get up on the bench and we're going to show you how we get round uh, lost keys on these. But wait, before we go any further, I'm going to show you this little tool. Now, if you don't have one of these in your toolbox and you do any auto electrical work or key work, get one of these. I'll put a link in the description if I can, because we actually do sell these in, in, in our web shop, ecuconnection.co.uk. Absolutely essential tool. So what this does, this, you call it a transponder tester, but it's technically not. It's a transceiver coil tester. Now, it goes around the lock barrel around there. And there's a little red LED, if you can just see it, that is a little LED. Now, if the cluster is sending a message through the transceiver coil to pick up the key transponder, which is in the key, you'll see that LED will flash. Now, I think the reason the locksmith failed on this one is because, if this will focus you, camera, there we go, if you see the... Um, LED on that. Now when I turn the key, you'll see that you don't get a flash. No flash there at all when I turn the key in the ignition. I'll do it again. This time I'll start it because we've got an IMO off. Oh, that was good. I got the key fob in the way. Let's try again. So, turn the key, start it. See, we've got an IMO off, so we're starting without uh, the need of a transponder in there. Um, so <laughs> what I've actually just found out is a bit of a change of plan. It's not picking up the transponder, which is why it's not starting the car, which is, uh, that's got to be why the uh, locksmith couldn't program the key to it. So we're going to have to fix this now, but um, I'll see if I can do that on the bench with the spares and I'll see what happens. Right, we are in the office now on the workbench. 
Uh, as we know, it's a Micronus because we've got the two screws. Now, this, this little blue plug can be for either uh, certain Micronus. They either have a blue plug or a great big black plastic plug. Uh, they also have an NEC type um, cluster, which has a very similar blue plug. But this one is a Micronus. To power these up on the bench, now the uh, auto locksmiths and the programmers are going to love this next bit because an Audi A3 is usually not possible to power up on the bench without some serious tools. What you need is a cracker box. A cracker box is a specially made tool for VW clusters. And uh, when I say a cracker box, I actually do mean it's a cracker box. So <laughs> this has been made for me specially by a very good friend of mine. And uh, what it is, it's uh, a test rig which does the big black plastic plug Micronus as an adapter lead, which will do the uh, blue NEC plugs. And also it does the blue Micronus, which is for the Audi TT and A3s. So let's rig this up on here and show you it in action. Right, so we are rigged up on the cracker box. We've got the uh, plug in at the back. First thing we're going to do is hit the power on the power supply. Uh, we've got our, our uh, transceiver coil tester. We're going to see if it works here. Now, I don't know if you saw that, but it just flashed. And it doesn't have safe on the dial. So the key that the uh, locksmith has made appears to be OK. If we try it with this, which is a, a non-transponder key, there's no transponder in this. We'll put that in, turn the key. We see it flash. We should see safe on the screen. But now let's show you this tool again. So with our little tester, did you see that red flash? The reason it flashed for a long time there with a non-transponder key is the cluster is sending a message out to get the transponder data and because it's not receiving it it sends it out and out and out a few times so you see it goes on for a few seconds and then off decides that it hasn't got a transponder puts the safe message on and uh, normally wouldn't let the car start but we've we've got around it with an immobilizer delete so now if i do it with the key that the guy um, made for the chap put it in we'll see how long that led stays on for this time don't know if you saw that, but it uh, only blinks very briefly. Try again. You see that? Very quick blink. So the key he's made, the locksmith has actually done fine. That's actually working fine. Uh, I don't know how he programmed it, but that proves that the transceiver coil on the customer's car is not working because on the cracker box, we have a working original transceiver coil and an ignition switch with um, uh, no wafers in it. So you can use any key, which is handy for programming. So let's switch that off. So that is now off. And we're going to have to change the uh, transceiver coil on the customer's car and then see if it all works then. Let's do that job. So there's the transceiver coil. Now, these are pressed onto the lock barrel, so you have to get them out and use a special tool to replace it. Now, luckily, I have one in my box, which is a, a new one. To get these out, you have to um, put the key in the ignition, turn it to position one. Now, if you can see this little slot down there, uh, you have to push a thin piece of wire, like a paper clip or a piano wire, something like that, down that slot in position one wriggly wriggly and out it comes if you want more information on how to do that check out our other videos where we show you exactly how to do it so now we have the lock barrel out with the uh, faulty transceiver coil aerial antenna whatever you want to call it here's our good one there's a tool we use again if you want to know how to swap these uh, check out our other video we'll show you how to do it or you can order this service to swap the transceiver coil it's on our website, ecuconnection.co.uk. Let me swap these over. Right, so we are reassembled. Uh, turns out it had an aftermarket lock barrel in, and that was a bit of a struggle. Um, it's a little bit temporary. I'm going to do that a little bit better for the customer, but get some up and running for now. We know what the fault is. Problem with aftermarket parts. So now when we put the key in, it's probably going to be better without the torch on. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to switch the torch away. 
Now watch the red LED on the transceiver coil tester. See that? Little flick. That's all it needs to uh, let's take it out again. Give it, give it a little bit of time for the immobilizer to set. Back on again. Absolutely essential bit of kit. So now let's uh, have a look at the screen. We have ignition on. Let's shut the door. Stop the beeping. So now when we start the car. No more safe. Windows. We we got windows. Switch that off. And show you once again, this is what you gotta get. If you're in the locksmithing industry, if you're in the auto electrical industry and you wanna know if your transceiver coil is working, um, I'll show you another little trick with these as well. So We've seen it working now Oof. with a working transponder. Now what we're going to do, we're going to fool it into not thinking there's a valid transponder. So let's run through this again. Key in, working transponder, very quick flash, no safe on the dial. We wrap the key in tinfoil. This masks the transponder coil, uh, transponder in the key. So now we put it in. Let's see what the red LED does. And you see that it's trying and trying and trying to get the message safe. No windows. So just a little bit of aluminium tinfoil, or if you're in America, aluminium tinfoil will mask the transponder. So, little flash, with it all working, jobs are good. Get yourself one of these, they aren't a lot of money. Current price is, I think about 20 quid plus VAT and postage. Link in the description down below. Uh, thank me when you get one, leave a comment. Uh, if you like the video, uh, click the like, subscribe, blah, 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 all the usuals, and uh, thanks very much, and I'll see you all later, bye bye. So um, what I've discovered is the key they've made doesn't work, uh, the door lock. There's another key on the key ring which operates the door lock. However, it doesn't operate the ignition switch. The reason was the ignition switch, which I um, fudged in there, you can see is all shiny and new. It was a brand new aftermarket part, and uh, when I was trying to swap the um, transceiver coil over, it just fell to bits. And I fudged it together, but now I've got it much better. Changed it for an OEM one. Right, final little cut. With a little more delving in a box, I actually had an original uh, OEM lock barrel. Uh, lesson learned. Don't faff about with aftermarket lock barrels because they're absolute garbage. When I tried to swap the ring, it just fell to bits. Now you can see it's got the got the nice window, turns nicely. Mileage, windows, jobs are good and time for me to go home. Sorted. Or at least I thought it was time to go home because I was finished. So it transpires with a conversation with the customer. The reason why the key actually did work once I got it on the bench and fixed the um, transceiver coil was because the locksmith didn't make a new key for it. He actually um, swapped the guts from his original working key into a new key case and cut a new blade for it because what he actually done was to replace the ignition barrel and transceiver coil with the dreaded aftermarket one. Uh, speaking to the customer, he actually still had the original lock barrel, which was working, and his original faulty transceiver coil. So the next day we had to go in and remove it all again, swap the transceiver coil one more time onto his working key, blade, uh, key barrel, uh, reassemble it all again and we then cut a new key blade to suit the car so now the original 
keys, open the door, the remote control we had to code in and make that work again. And the same um, key blade now operates the door and the ignition barrel. So finally, it was a complete job done and the customer was very happy. I just thought I'd add in a bit of B-roll here showing you how we actually swap the transceiver coils with our little special tool we've got. Um, you can see I've just removed the barrel there and then it's a case of just pressing it back in. Presses in quite easily. I'm just using a vise here to do it. Uh, once again, if you want any of this work doing, just contact us at ecuconnection.co.uk. Uh, give us a ring if you want any advice on anything. Uh, come and see us for any programming work. And uh, that's the end of the video, finally. Um, hopefully, I'll see you on the next one. Don't forget, if you found this useful, click the like, share, and subscribe. But most of all, thanks very much for watching.